around verse 31, Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, they were astounded at the power and authority in which he taught from because he didn't teach like an ordinary teacher. He didn't teach like an ordinary prophet because they, they, had, they had labeled him as just being a teacher, but he taught with just power and authority. He's not an ordinary teacher. He's not an ordinary preacher. It's something different about him. Now, follow me now. He went through temptation and rejection, yet he shows up stronger, wiser, and better. After what he went through, it didn't break him, it made him better. I'm declaring right now to every sickness, every disease, every unclean spirit. I'm declaring right now to every trial you've been through. It will not break you. It will make you better. You would have thought by now he would have been crippled. Spiritually crippled. The devil after me. My folks rejected me. By the time he got to the synagogue in Caprinia, you would have thought he would have been a nervous wreck. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But yet he shows up. After all that with power and authority. Your marriage went through that so it can be better. Your child went through that so he or she can be better. You experience that loss so you would be better. Systematically, I learned my craft in a classroom setting. I learned theory and principle. But the anointing came when I had lifetime experience. I can tell you through theory. The formula. But at some point, God decided to elevate me from being a theory teacher. I always knew the formula. Now I'm a witness that the formula works. Because I am a part of the formula. I'm in the midst of the formula. I know I can be healed by faith. Not what I heard, but what I... No longer in theory and principle. Now I can declare a testimony. It made me stronger. It made me better. Well, the reason he need to be stronger and better because remember when you are delivered, it's for a purpose. No one receives a delivery without a purpose. Ah, uh, you're not getting this. I had a package being delivered this week from UPS. The first day I missed them. They left a note. We'll be back. Ah, uh, you're not getting it. If you miss it the first go round, God will come back around again. The second day I missed it again. Like, ooh, I need that package delivered. But on the third day, I showed up at the same time the UPS truck showed up. I'm coming in one way and he's coming in another way. I jump out, he jump out at the same time. He said, Reverend, I've been looking for you. I've been trying to locate you. And the Holy Spirit says, that's what God is saying. God is saying, church of the 21st century, I've been looking for you. I've been trying to locate you. I got something that belongs. I got something that belongs to you. I got your joy. I got your peace. I got your happiness. I got your prosperity. Show up when I show up. Yes, 
Jesus! 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 And if you're not there when I'm there, you have to manufacture your praise. You have to test the lie. And there's no power and authority in that. Time out for the tricks and gimmicks. You've been fooling folks long enough. I will trust in the Lord as long as you pay me. As long as you put my name on the marquee. Lord, if you need somebody to go, I'll go. As long as I'm on the rhythm now first. Time out for that. Because notice, he needed his strength because the next verse says, an unclean spirit shows up. And if you're not right, when an unclean spirit shows up, it will overcome you. If you're not walking according to God's word, when the spirit of Jezebel shows up, when the spirit of fornication shows up, when the spirit of greed shows up, when the spirit of homosexuality shows up, when the spirit of poverty shows up, if you're not walking accordingly, So God the Father had to make sure God the Son was strong enough for an unclean spirit to show up. That's why some of you are going through what you're going through. Because God wants you to work out in the spirit realm. So when an unclean spirit shows up, you're strong enough. Yeah, I, I realized something, church. It's too late to find out on the spot. It's too late before she show up with her boobs out. Too late then. It's too late before she show up with her daisy dukes on. It's too late, it's too late before she show up with her extended. It's too late before he show up with birds and biceps. Get back to the lesson. Get back to the lesson. Jesus. Jesus. So the Bible says this unclean spirit shows up. Now, 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 now watch this. Matthew 10, 1 said, he gave his disciples authority. Ah, it went right over your head. He gave his disciples authority to cast out unclean spirits. We shouldn't be getting trapped up with unclean spirits. We should be walking in such an anointing that we can cast out unclean spirits. Parents shouldn't struggle with the same struggle that children are struggling with. Mothers and daughters shouldn't be competing. But who got the most Facebook admirers? Who got the tightest weave? Since he gave us power and authority to cast out unclean spirits. But what we have done, the church, we have begun to socialize. We have begun to yoke up. 
we, we have began to make friend requests with unclean spirits. We have began to tweet unclean spirits. We have begun to download unclean spirits. We we gonna eat with unclean spirits. We play with unclean spirits. And we wonder why do we have an odor that don't smell like the aroma? This man shows up with an unclean spirit. Say we have power. And I believe that if he said we have it. I believe he said we have it. I believe I can declare I have it. So don't get twisted what I just said. I'm not running from unclean spirits. I want to be around unclean spirits because I believe I have power and authority to cancel them. But if you're not spending time with Jesus, I wouldn't recommend you hang out with unclean spirits. Because my grandfather would always tell me, when I give you the keys, don't ride with more than one other person. Yeah. Especially the male, because if it's more than two of y'all, one of y'all dirty. Hey. Yeah. And I start saying, what if I'm the dirty one? <laughs> See, you got to understand something. If you're not strong enough to handle a certain crowd and atmosphere, don't set yourself up for failure. Watch this. When you get home, I hope you're taking notes. I hope you got your journal and you're taking notes. If you don't have a journal, I recommend you get one. See the media ministry in the back. Get your journal and walk through this year with me. Taking notes. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. In Mark chapter 5, just believe me if there. Go home and stay. Mark chapter 5, Jesus, at the end of chapter 4, Jesus comes out of a storm. You know the story. Jesus and his disciples, the one he gave power and authority to, they're on a boat. Going over to the other side. The Bible says a storm breaks out. The disciples start whining and complaining like y'all do. Jesus wakes up, rebukes the storm. Peace be still. The water and waves obey his voice. They get to dry land and the first thing happens, they run into a man with an unclean spirit living in a tomb in a graveyard. That's around Mark chapter 5 verse number 2. The, the Bible says the unclean spirits are so numerous, he calls himself legions. Legion was not his name. Legions was the multitude of demonic spirits he was operating under. The demonic spirits recognized the presence of Jesus. Now, Jesus just rebuked a storm. Now he's getting ready to rebuke an unclean spirit. His disciples are witnessing what's going on. This man with this unclean spirit hurting himself like many in this generation hurting themselves self-inflicted pain bad decision making spirit of entitlement self-inflicted destruction the man don't have his foot on your throat you have your own foot on your own throat and these unclean spirits say Jesus what do you want with us? Jesus rebukes those spirits and cast them out. Watch this. Remember they were going to throw Jesus over the cliff? It didn't work. But Jesus throws the unclean spirits over the cliff. <laughs> oh, you're not getting how powerful my God is. They want to throw him over the cliff. Yet in return, he ends up throwing them over the cliff. Then this man who was filled with demons. In verse number two, by the time he's the end of the story, the Bible says he's in his right mind. 